Hello, this is Jason from inspiredrewire.com and this video is about what to do in a crash. So what are some things that you can actually do for yourself to really help yourself to be kind, compassionate to yourself if you're experiencing a dip or a crash. So I experienced many crashes uh, before I did the lightning process. Uh, I had maybe one or two dips after I learned the lightning process and never any crashes whatsoever. And I'll explain why that actually is. So some things that I noticed is that when it was, uh, maybe I was overdoing it, usually before a crash, especially like back in 2013, I had been increasing my activity. I had gradually built up uh, my walking ability from like less than two minutes to walking over 40 minutes every day. And I started to climb some small little mountains as well. And it just became too much. I, I started to push myself. And then when I noticed uh, some symptoms uh, kind of flaring up, then the the biggest thing that actually caused the crash uh, back then in 2013 was the stress about the symptoms because my thought process uh, instead of thinking oh wow i'm actually getting better i'm doing all these things i'm able to walk like 40 minutes every day i'm able to do lots of stuff that i enjoy and generally feeling getting better However, when symptoms started to flare, when I had overdone it, then my thought pattern, instead of being positive, actually, I was thinking about, oh gosh, you know, what am I going to feel like tomorrow? Oh shit, I've completely overdone it. Uh, what what's going to happen now? You know, what does this mean? What are all these symptoms? Oh God, I'm in a crash. Those kind of catastrophizing kind of thoughts and I kind of snowballed it started like with small kind of negative thoughts or doubts and then it became oh gosh how long is this going to last for all these all these kind of disaster kind of uh, thought patterns which greatly influenced and increased my stress so my stress levels went through the roof actually uh, when I was thinking about all that. So it was releasing so much uh, adrenaline, and cortisol, and epinephrine, norepinephrine, DHEA. All of these hormones were like released, flooded throughout my body um, because I was in the physical emergency response. So my sympathetic nervous system was very active. And this is actually the pattern that led to the burnout. So it wasn't so much about me uh, overdoing it physically. Yes, I had definitely done a little bit too much physically back then. I was progressing at a little bit too quick of a rate um, because I wasn't using something like the lighting process at the same time. And because of all of that, uh, the stress when it kicked in, it was super, super depleting. So that was actually what the crash was about. It, was, it wasn't It was so much about, so okay, the overdoing it physically was like a little bit of a trigger, but what the real uh, consequence of that was the thought patterns. Me thinking that, oh crap, and all this kind of disaster kind of th thinking. So, so very negative thinking. You know, I wasn't intentionally wanting to trigger my sympathetic nervous system or the physical emergency response or the fight or flight response. However, I was uh, to a very high level. And that's what led to the crash or the burnout. It was the sympathetic nervous system being so active because what happened uh, when that was active was my symptoms. Initially, I was getting some symptoms, but after I engaged the physical emergency response, the sympathetic nervous system, System, then those symptoms got radically worse because of the stress, not of not because of me actually overdoing it physically. Because actually now my awareness about it is completely different. Uh, if I you know if I overdid it a little bit while I was uh, recovering uh, using the lighting process, then all I needed to do was to calm down my nervous system, engage the parasympathetic nervous system so that the rest and digest response, so all of my organs were functioning properly. I was able to bounce back uh, to homeostasis very quickly and whatever symptoms I was experiencing would quickly fade and my energy would come back within like a day 
or two days absolute max um, and that would be even after me like really pushing the ball out physically so I remember that did happen one time to me uh, after using lighting process after learning it uh, I, I actually did I climbed like two mountains uh, two days in a row and after I climbed the second one, uh, I just started to experience a little bit of symptoms. So I was doing a little bit of palpitations and just a little bit. It was like, it was basically worry that maybe I had overdone it a little bit. And I focused on using the lighting process to increase my calmness and my confidence so I could engage the parasympathetic nervous system. And I bounced back very, very, very quickly and easy peasy. Uh, however, if I didn't have known, if I didn't know the lighting process and I didn't implement the lighting process at that point, that would have been a full on burnout. Uh, so it, instead of that, it was a little dip. So this is the key. This is a major, major, major key uh, to eliminating burnouts and crashes is actually instead of uh, focused on kind of relaxing but actually stressing while you're laying there or while you're sitting there, uh, focus on alleviating that stress. Focus on building calmness, relaxation and confidence by using the lighting process to really help you. Uh, and then uh, what I noticed is I bounced back super quickly. So it's much more important to use your neurophysiology in a completely different way firing those neurons that are associated with calmness and confidence that you can bounce back very quickly and that you can feel fantastic doing those things i would say was massively more influential for me than you know taking supplements or you know there's some things that you can do like say taking a nice warm bath uh, maybe an hour before you go to bed that can be useful uh, for relaxing your system getting better quality sleep uh, and this, you know, being more kind to yourself, more gentle, allowing yourself to relax. However, yes, it's the retraining your thought patterns. That's what I needed to focus on. And that was the key to eliminating all, you know, no more burnout, no more booming and busting, no more crashing. And also stopping, you know, being kind to yourself, not like pushing yourself, making sure, I made sure after that as well, that it was like a feeling an 8, 9 or a 10 out of 10 uh, in terms of just my general level of wellness before I would do something and during uh, doing it as well. So if it was a mountain climb, I'd make sure there was 8, 9 or 10 uh, before, during and also after. Yep. And that was it. That's how I did it. So doesn't have to be something that's really complicated or complex or struggling or pushing through. Pushing is something that never actually leads uh, to good results. So what I would say is if you want the best, the absolute best results, focus on reprogramming. Focus on doing these things that are really good for you, being kind, compassionate to yourself. Never push, relax, and, and at the same time, doing things that you would love to do. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll speak to you very soon.